Okay. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the session of UiPath's Document Understanding Power, where we are going to talk about the power of AI, which we have been hearing about since last couple of months, years, that AI is now evolving much, much more better. You might have also heard about a huge amount of Gen AI capabilities, which are now coming up as part of UiPath product itself. And that's where we have so many amazing updates in UiPath products, which are related to AI. And UiPath document understanding is one of the biggest AI product in UiPath. And in this product, we have so many amazing generative AI updates and also specialized AI updates. So if you are certified as a specialized AI uh, you know, specialist, then amazing. If not, then let me just add a little bit about it. So the certification which we both just now mentioned is UiPath's specialized AI certification. In that certification, you have to know about the specialized AI products of UiPath, like document understanding, communications mining, and AI center. And these products are very easy to use. So you don't have to be actually technically expert in Python or some coding language to use these products, but you just need to know these products much better so that you can use these products and you already become AI expert. So these products are very easy to learn since it's all, again, a local application platform where you get to learn document understanding, uh, AI center and communications mining. And if you can go through the community uh, training for the specialized AI, you can learn all about it. And this is very easy with the, if you already have UiPath advanced developer certification, only in that case, you can apply for the certification. So make sure you have that advanced developer certification already. And once you have that certification, then you can <clears throat> opt in for specialized AI with the training of two months and use hands-on use is very important of at least uh, three months. You can actually apply for the exam and you can become master of specialized AI as well. With that, let me get started and let me introduce you to our today's speaker. So today we have Monica as our speaker, who is senior product manager at UiPath for AI products at UiPath, which is uh, my most favorite product. And that's why we called her today here to speak with all of us about the latest features in UiPath AI products and specifically about document understanding. So if you have any questions today to ask Monica, uh, you can reach out to her, you can ask her any questions, right? And she's uh, like one of my most favorite product manager because we always talk about new stuff, use cases, AI. So don't hesitate to talk about anything. You have any questions related to you or any other product of AI as well, you can ask her and welcome to the session. With that, I'll not talk a lot. <laughs> I'll hand over my session to Monica and over to you, Monica. Thanks a lot, Nisar. Thanks for having me. Thanks everyone for joining. Before starting, I wanted to let you know that this session is for you. I just want to underline what Nisar has been saying, namely, I hope you get benefits out of it. I hope you find a forum in which you can comfortably ask questions, make sure you understand everything. And basically, me and Nisar will be here to support you, to enable you so that you can further leverage our features and implementations for your clients. This is for you. Feel free to add many questions, ask them on the chat, feel free to interrupt me. It's not supposed to necessarily be a presentation. I'd like it to be a conversation. So if I don't make a lot of sense, feel free to jump in and uh, yeah, make sure that you get the most out of it. Um, and yes, basically, I want to tell you about the latest and greatest we've been up to in document understanding, but there's a story. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and you let me know in case you face issues seeing it. So Yes, you can um, see your screen. Take me a sec. Today, I want to talk to you about how US developers can leverage document understanding. And basically, I just want to cover a couple of points. I want to talk about the use case, which may be familiar to many of you, namely the, the one in which you go on a business trip and then need to to um, basically reimburse your expenses. And then how you would go about automating this. 
I will do so using our newest feature called Active Learning, which basically provides the ability to train your custom specialized models in a guided experience so that you don't have to be an ML scientist or a data scientist to build these models, but uh, rather are guided through your experience building specialized extraction and um, classification models, which can then be consumed in your favorite um, IDE, probably Studio, but I'm going to demo it with Studio Web because it's easier for me. And then something which we also launched fairly new in document understanding is the ability to monitor the performance of the models. So at a high level, this is what I want us to talk about. But again, in case you need to interrupt me or make sure you understand correctly, please do so. So to begin with, let's talk about the story. Let's talk about the use case reimbursement of business trip expenses. So imagine the following as employees, you or you or employees of your clients often occur expenses which happen during business trips. And this may be either accommodation, meals or others. And for these and for these businesses receive receipts, hotel invoices, and business trip invitations and need to expense these to the employees. Um, consider you're working in the finance department and need to automate the expense management and therefore you leverage document understanding. So we are tasked to do the following. We know we have three document types, hotel invoices, receipts, business trip invitation. From the hotel invoices, so business trip invitations would kind of be invitations for clients asking us to go over on a business trip. They can be handwritten for, for some customers uh, and they basically provide details about the business trip and about the person going on it. And then there are hotel invoices for which we need to extract the check-in and check-out date, bill to name and invoice total. And similarly, receipts for which we want to extract the date and total because we want to make sure that all those expenses occur during the business trip, match the information of the business trip invitation. So we need to verify that the business trip request is the same, contains the same data as um, the other documents. And in case of very high bills, for example, invoices more than $1,000, we need to verify the validity of the document. We don't want to pay up, end up paying $10,000 for an invoice which should have been 1000 or or 100 or Yeah, basically make sure that the money that goes out is for the proper services. This is what we will focus on today. This is what I want to show you today. I'm guessing you have no questions so far, so I'm just going to go ahead and show it to you. You may already have seen this. This is document understanding in Automation Cloud. This is what you get rendered when you just select it from this menu. And uh, with our newest interface, you have here two options, create project or create automation. With the latter one, you may already be familiar. You, when you choose to create automation, you're asked to provide a sample document. This sample document is then classified so that we select the corresponding extractor for it. And then um, if you're happy with the classification, just leave it as is. If not, you can change it. And then you would create a cross-platform workflow, which will be opened in Studio Web for you to be able to modify it. Now, considering um, you are somewhat familiar with this feature, I'm gonna go back and not create an automation. I wanna create a custom project to process my document types. I am asked to provide it a name, let's call it MVP or project and then I have this option to choose a classic or a modern experience and I'm gonna go ahead to choose a modern experience because this is the newest I was telling you about while the classic contains all the standard functionality you may already be familiar with one click ml or, or forms ai or importing packages from a center um the modern one is the guided experience we work towards 
There currently are some feature differences between the two. So modern does not support everything the classic experience currently does, but we're hoping to slowly but surely close the gap by the end of the year. I also have here some advanced options where I can choose the OCR method to be used within the project. And I was also telling you about our newest UiPath Extended Languages OCR. We still recommend to use the UiPath Document OCR as default and for Latin languages, but if you face issues, go ahead and use these, use this. Okay, uh, and yeah, I'm just gonna go ahead and create a modern project as part of it. Notice how I have here four components to the left. I have here a tab for building the project, measure, publish, and monitor. And I am asked to upload some sample documents to start building your project, either by dragging them and dragging and dropping them, or um, I'll just go ahead and click to browse. I share like this. So I already have a collection of receipts, which I want to work with. So I'm going to go ahead and upload them. However, if I wouldn't have had the collection, I could have as well bumped various types of documents because what currently happens is that the documents are classified in the background and we try to assign a document type to them. Now, we can only assign out of the box document type, which we are familiar with. If you want to add a custom document type, you can do so from here. I can go ahead and add a new custom document type and I will do so for hotel invoices. While we do have the invoices out of the box model, it is not able to extract check-in and check-out dates because this is not something which is applicable for all types of invoices. And I've seen on the chat a question uh, saying something like, how can we classify multiple types of invoices and how can we extract data from them? I'm happy to show you a little later in Studio Web. But now I want to create my custom hotel invoice. So I'm going to go ahead and add a custom document type. And I can here as well browse to add invoices, to add my invoices to them. I am doing so because uh, while it helps grouping documents into document types, this is only for the classification part. This does not solve extraction for me. I can see here the previously uploaded documents, but this has been identified as an invoice. However, I know that it's a receipt, so I will just move it to the receipts document type. I have a quick question, Monica. Please. Sorry to interrupt. So Please this experience, which you're uh, showing right now, the classification, is this the generative AI classification or is this still using the specialized AI classification in backend? So it's using our specialized ML classifier in the background. It's not using um, generative classification, but also for a good reason and good call of Nisarg. Let me tell you why. We use the specialized classifier to identify out of the box document types because those for us have a schema. Those for Agreed. us have a list of fields, and we use the list of fields for pre labeling the documents. Look at what I'm doing now. After having the documents uploaded and classified, I go ahead and annotate them to be able that to be able to extract information from them and assign them to a field. And notice how I rendered the document and everything is pre-labeled for me. I can just go ahead and confirm the extraction if I'm happy with it or change it. But basically, as a person building the model, my work is fairly easy. I don't have to manually go ahead and input all the documents. I just need to verify them. And yes, of course, if the total amount, for example, is this, then I'll go ahead and assign this value to the total amount. That's fine, but my life is much easier. And we do so because we know of the out-of-the-box document types and we just use their schema to populate these various, um, the values of the various fields. And basically what I would need to do is go through all the documents, verify the extraction results and confirm it. 
And once in Pravin, do you want to ask something? Okay, I'll take it. Let's know. Um, and once I'm happy with the extraction of all of them, I would be seeing them here as labeled and training will be started for them. So this interface contains a bunch of things and this is for the user to know what he's doing, what he's supposed to be doing to improve the model experience. I have here a set of recommendations. To improve classification, I need to upload more, more documents. And this also depends on the document type. So basically, we faced many times the question in which people would ask, how much labeling do I need to do? How much documents do I need to uh, upload? How many fields, how many layouts, and so on. And truthfully, there's not a single number. There's not a golden formula. And it very much depends on the type of documents, on the number of variations, on the number of fields, on the number of languages, and so on. So with this experience, we try to guide you towards um towards well-performing models. And basically, as a model builder, you would go through these recommendations. There are some for classification others from extraction, and uh, after going through all of them, training will start and your model will be, um, yeah, eventually you can then publish a model version. Now, because I don't want to label all these documents while being here with you, I'm going to show you how it would look like if I would have already performed the labeling. I've done the minimum minimum just to have a model. And I basically annotated or labeled my hotel invoices. I can show it. So I have here this information for all of them. And then um, similar for my receipts. I see here how my model is currently performing. This is performing average because it has few fields. This is performing poor because I would need more samples, but it was enough for me to get up and running and to test my model. I also have here a project score. If I click on it, I get, I have the next tab open, which is the measure tab. Here I can see the total project score, which again would like to provide me some insights into how my model is performing. Currently fairly poor. I get that if I would add more data to it, its, import, its performance would be improving, but it's good enough for the demo purposes. Here I have similarly the recommendations and I also have some metrics with regards to the precision, accuracy, recall, and so on. First for classification, then similarly for extraction, and all these are fed into the project score. Now, consider we are happy with the um, consider we are happy with the setup of the model. The next thing for me would be to publish it. Here in this page, I can create a project version, which basically snapshots my project at this given point in time. I would be creating it by clicking here. So I call it like community or however I want. It can be as well as you can. I would be selecting here the models to include, whether I want classifier or just extraction models. And then basically afterwards, I would be able to create it. Once I create it, it would be here and I would be able to deploy it via this option. And then um, I, I can use the created project version to automate my process. Notice this section here. I can consume a, more, a selected project version, so whatever. And I have two options or three options actually. I can integrate via API. If I click on this option, I can see Python code, Java code, C sharp, Node.js. And basically this is a code snippet consuming Dio Cloud APIs. I'm not sure if you're already familiar with our APIs. So basically they are RESTful APIs, which you can consume from various technologies and which not, don't necessarily require a robot. And if you want to consume the project by APIs, you would copy this code 
input it to, into your favorite IDE, um, provide a value for the app ID and app secret, which you would you which you would retrieve when creating an external application and the file you want to work with. Then the snippet digitizes the file and extracts the file using getting the first extractor or so on. Um, and you would basically be able to take the code and modify it as per your use case. However, if you want to continue your journey in Studio or Studio Web, you have these options too. You have here this button for opening Studio Web or you would have opening Studio Desktop available too if you were on Windows, but I'm running on Mac and that's why I don't have this option available. So I go ahead and open this in Studio Web. I don't know why. It... Never mind the error. I'm sorry, I'm using the development environment because I want to have the latest UI. So basically what happens is that I have chosen to continue my journey in Studio Web and now I have uh, created cross-platform workflow, which I can go ahead and customize. But as I was mentioning, it doesn't necessarily has to be, have to be Studio Web. Uh, I know you may be familiar and very much used to Studio. It's everyone's favorite IDE. And you could take this cross-platform workflow and consume it in Studio and modify it there. Um, it takes a little while to load, but basically what in the please. In the meantime, we have two quick questions. Quick questions. Quick questions. So the first sure, one is from Mayank. Uh, no, I'll, I'll read it out to you. So first one is from Mayank. He's asking, is the modern experience GA or? Since yesterday, yes. <laughs> That's amazing. So uh, I hope that answers your question, Mayank. So since yesterday, we have the modern experience of uh, UI part document understanding GA already, so we can actually use it, showcase it for our customers as well. And Vittal has one question, Monica. He's asking some invoices may contain regular fields, some invoices may contain like tableau data, line items. So while we are doing this training, do we need to train both of these invoices categories separately or do we need to create separate data set projects for them? So it depends. Do you treat the invoices as one document type? Because I would say yes. So you have the same invoice with and without tables. And I can show you how this would look like for receipts, but it would be very similar for invoices too. So we realized that you would treat, you don't care very much about the type of field. And we display for you simple fields here, but also this tabular fields here, the items table, which you can expand see the table the table view and basically get the extraction result or would be able to label in this table view. Now we currently only support one table per document type, but we're looking at adding the support for multiple tables too. Oh, and one more question. This recommendation, which we see on the right hand side, saying that uh, re recommended to upload 30 documents for better experience. Is this a mandatory or is this just a recommendation? recommendation. For example, you can, <laughs> my project score is 40, but I will show you in my demo that it's still working for me. So it's a recommendation. It. So, so it's a recommendation. Yeah. So as I was telling, we've gotten many customers asking us, how many documents do I need to label? Or we've gotten someone saying, why is the number of documents which I can label uh, limited to 20,000? And we're like, dear God, it's enormous. How did you get to that number? They were like, we wanted to, yes. to keep improving the model. And we're like, there's only so much you can do at some point. We set there a limit because we thought no one would ever reach it. But then surprise. So therefore, um, recommendations are supposed to be getting you. And you, it may be the case, Nisar, um, that you upload 30 documents and then we realize hey you added more fields or there are many layouts in those documents <laughs> so we ask you to upload 30 more agree <laughs> so that's why it's recommendation and guidance and dynamically build awesome thank you monica um do you have other questions if not i get back to my we have just last question and then we can continue. So question from Vettel again, does AI unit will be consumed while labeling or does it only consume when ML model is used as an extraction deployment? 
Right. So we also changed our pricing strategy. We will be consuming one AI unit per page, regardless what you're doing on the page, except for a newest feature, which is called generative validation. So basically you'd be charging, you'd be paying one AI unit per digitization call of the page. We don't charge labeling or pre-annotation. We don't charge training. We don't charge uh, hosting. We don't charge classification or extraction. You'll be charging one AI. You'll be charged one AI unit per digitized page. If you digitize twice, you pay twice. I want to oh. give you a thought here because you asked about AI units. Um, in this workflow, I have generated from document understanding. What happens is that we retrieve the, some sample files from the orchestrator storage packet. We classify the document because we have a classifier and the output is document data. We provide the document data output as input to our extract document data activity. The input for the classified document is downloaded file. If you provide the file as input, it will digitize it. You will pay. If you provide the document data as input, document data contains the digitized result. You will not pay. If you provide here the file again, we digitize again. You will pay again. So maybe pay attention to this. You pay per digitization. Other than that, you can do whatever you want. We don't care. It's just that when you digitize, you pay. Make sure to only provide the file as input to the first activity. Then reuse the digitization result. Nisar, you tell me if I was clear. Because I really want don't I mean I really want to enable you in this regard so we don't then have surprises. Why did I end up paying in my automation three times uh, AI units per page because you digitize three times because you provided the file as input to three activities. Let me know if this makes sense. This actually makes sense. However, uh, now it could be a little bit tricky for some to understand because digitization was a step where OCR was involved. Now we know that document OCR was free of cost for extraction. We never charged for document OCR, right? Now, we, when we say we, at the point of digitization, the AI units will be charged. So no matter which validation we use, which extractor, extractor we use, or which classification we use, will it be charged similar for all? Or will there be different charges for generative AI extractors and generative AI validators uh, following up to the DU project? So the pricing I was telling about is just with, within the new active learning project, within the modern projects. In these okay. projects, you pay for digitization, but then if you classify, you don't pay anymore. You extract, you don't pay anymore. We don't care anymore. You can you and what we will also do is add the generative classifier and extractor to the active learning mm -hmm. product. So that will charge that will be charged one AI unit per page two. Oh wow, that's great. <laughs> now it's yes. clear. So Especially. basically you could do the following, extract using specialized. If it's not working, mm -hmm. extract using generative and you would still pay one AI unit per page provided you don't digitize twice. Got it. So I, if you can also help me enable the community or you could also spread the word in this regard so people don't end up paying more than they should and end up using their digitization result, that would be great because we try to simplify to make it less confusing for users, but we also want to underline the fact that you only pay for digitization. So make sure to reuse it. For sure, we'll, we'll enlighten on this point more so that now, now that who are using DU and who wish to use DU in their future projects, they understand more about how the pricing actually works. Now it's more simplified rather than confused. You know, we need AI calculator and go ahead and calculate the separate units for separate models. This is much more easier. Thank you. I'm very happy to hear. Cool. Um, so I continue my journey from Studio Web here. I have here my automation created. What has happened is that we download the sample file. 
We use the classified document activity, and if we encounter hotel invoices, then the corresponding hotel invoices extractor, and uh, else, sorry, if we encounter receipts, then the corresponding receipts extractor. And we also added a validation activity so you can see the results in Action Center. I can just go ahead and start my automation. I can just run it or customize it. This is supposed to be for you a quick start skeleton which you can go ahead and customize, which you can adapt to match your use case. However, you wouldn't be required necessarily to do this from scratch. You could just adopt it, try it out, try out the models. Eventually, here is also one point in SAR where you see that hmm, I may need to go through multiple recommendations because the extracted result is not what I expected it to be, you know? I agree. And this is just a demo, so it's okay. <laughs> I'm more interested in how later on, now that you're using Mac, but for most of our users here, how we can actually use this product or project from directly from studio web to studio also. So I think we can export this when from studio web as well, right? At yes, this point. Absolutely. So you can export it to from studio web and import it into awesome. studio. And I think in studio web, you have an option, something like continuing studio. We'll search for it once. Um, we'll search for it soon. But yes, you can, uh -huh. you, you'll have the exact same experience in studio too. As part of this workflow, I have here a new task created. So I'm going to go ahead and open Action Center to access it. The, it's this task created a couple seconds ago. And I can see the, uh, receipt, the extraction results. I will assign it to me. I will validate it and yes, ooh, ooh, I am very happy with it. Um, no, no quantity extracted, but it is okay because it is missing. Here is the tabular data you can see. And by the way, we're also working on improving the experience and validation station. Once I'm happy with the validation, ex with the extraction of the document, I go ahead and submit my task and continue my automation. And then basically here I can see the extraction result. And I would, as mentioned, go ahead and customize my workflow. The use case I was describing you was something like if you have hotel invoices or receipts or a business trip invitation letter, um, do something with them. So basically extract the data, verify the data, and then maybe push it to concur. Um, I have something pre-made in which I extract the data and modify it so that I don't keep you now waiting. And I wanted to show you this. I don't, you should be having an option here to open in studio. I don't have it because I'm on a Mac. Yes, I know. I have seen this option. We have Perfect. the option to open in studio. Yes. Perfect. So that is what you would not that is that is what you would normally do. So I was telling you that we need to work with three types of documents. I have built classifiers for two of them. Another one of them would be uh, the employee invitation letter. Hmm. What happened to you? The employee invitation letter, which can as well be unstructured. Let me try to search for it. I'll show it to you. I'll show you a sample of the invitation letter. So you will see how it would how it would look like. It would look something like this. Mm -hmm. This is handwritten. We invite some employee on a business trip. Now, the thing with this letter is that the information in it is unstructured. And so can it be in multiple letters. So it doesn't make sense for us to upload them, to label them, because how many layouts would we have? 
maybe in this case we even reach the point in which we need to upload hundreds of documents because we can train a model so therefore we have introduced generative capabilities you may already have heard about them because they're all over the place and in order for us to be able to work with all these document types i'm going to show you what i did in my workflow and this is, I replaced the classifier, which I've built as part of my model, as part of my modern project in the active learning experience with this generative classifier. So basically, instead of selecting the expense reporting project I've built, I selected the predefined project in which I have here the, I have here, all out of the box resources available ready for consumption. And in this sense, I have the generative classifier. This classifier allows me to define document types and provide prompts based on which I identify the respective document types. For using this, I need no labeling, I need no training, zero setup. I just add the activity, define the document types I want to work with and define the prompts. There was a question in the chat, something like working with various type of invoices. You could be defining in the generative classifier, hotel invoices, invoices for food, event invoices, electricity invoices, whatever type you want to work with. And then the prompt, which would kind of be like the description for the document type. So something like, you'll be telling the large language model or the generative classifier what, how uh, it could identify that type of document. For example, a hotel invoices, a document invoicing the stay of a person at a hotel containing details about his check-in and check-out days, billing information, room rates, and total to be paid. Similarly for the others. I do this to be able to also identify the business invitation letter. And then similar to the generative cl uh, classifier, I have the generative extractor. So I started from the template I've shown you. I modified the classifier. I still still have the conditions whether invoices, hotel invoices are encountered. I'm still using the specialized um, hotel invoices extractor I just built. I'm still using the same one for receipts. And then what I would do is if I don't encounter a receipt, so if I don't encounter a hotel invoice and I don't encounter receipts, I must have found a business trip invitation. So I'm gonna add here an extract document data. I would eventually add a new condition, verify that the classification type really is um, business trip invitation, but for now, I'll just add extract document data. And similarly as to the classifier, I'm choosing here the predefined project with the generative extractor. The generative extractor allows me to define fields I want to extract it and the correspond fields I want extracted and the corresponding prompt. So I will extract here, for, ex for example, um, the person who is invited on the business trip, kind of like employee who is invited on the business trip. And then dates. What are the dates? And then as input, I will be using the result of the classified document activity. And it's also here as recommended input. So I would be just using it from here. And then just write the information on the screen. Or, yeah. I use, so employee would be the person invited. And then they, and basically on this type of data, I would add my business logic upon and use it in my automation, either push it to concur or create validation tasks or whatever. 
I and for simplicity purposes, I will disable these to just have a look at the generative extraction. And I will make sure that I have the corresponding file in my orchestrator storage bucket. Because I don't yet. This eventually I remove and I will upload it. So I show you how it works. No. Orchestrator experience is not the best, but it's fine. It's something we can work with. And now I go ahead and run my automation. And I'll show you the generative extractor. So you've seen the document, you've seen the information I want to extract from it. And uh, yeah, I just want to write it on screen. And in the meantime, Nisar, if there are more questions, I'm happy to take them. Yes, sure. Also, just to highlight uh, on a little bit what Monica just did. So she just simply uploaded documents to the storage buckets because her experience is a virtual experience using Studio Web. That's where you can loop through all the documents which you want uh, offline from your folders. But when you work with Studio Web, you usually use storage bucket. If you can, you use another storage bucket as well. There are various options of storage buckets. Any more questions? So we have a question from uh, Vittal again, who asked us, we have some invoices uh, containing uh, contents which are like utilities, like electricity, water bill, diesel, etc., And all are in one invoice. So in the special case, how we can actually classify the two types of invoices. I think he's asking more of like a, a splitter, which <laughs> we had earlier, right? Yeah. <laughs> so I, do I we need to use right. specific keyword and something else? I think you're right. So yes, uh, a very good point on that, Nisar. So mm -hmm. it's not that you need classification. You need to split the document into two and then figure out the fact that they are two and you need to... Um, extract information from both. So this is a capability. I was telling you that we don't yet have all capabilities in both experiences. This is a capability we plan on adding for 24, 2410, fingers crossed. And then your experience would be something like this. You give the document as input. We identify the fact that there are two documents. We say some, we return as response something like, hey, the first sub document is the first two pages and it's an invoice. And the second sub document is the last three pages and it is a utility build. Bill. You would use these sub documents and extract the corresponding data from them. I hope that answers your question, Vital. If you have any following up question or if you have any more questions, please post in the chat. So I'm taking all the questions from chat. If anyone Perfect. has questions, please feel free to post a question. Anyways, we have a QA and a session around the end of the session. So you can ask your questions directly to Monica. Over to you, Monica. Yeah, so uh, basically kind of like I wanted to show you the result of my generative extraction. So you've seen I had three files in the orchestrator storage packet. So my workflow executed three times. And for the business trip invitation letter, I have here the name of the employee and the dates when he's traveling. So this has been extracted by my generative extractor without any need of setup from my side. It's all, it even works for hotel invoices where uh, they identified similarly the employee and the dates. And basically what you would be doing is um, comparing these and pushing them to concur or whatever. And of course, no results for receipts because there's no name. There's no checking yes. the So this kind of concludes my demo. Unless you want me to show you something in particular or you have further questions. I personally have a question. Mm -hmm. uh, so this, this is related to the experience of our active learning or the new modern design experience where we have the percentage of the accuracy displayed. This percentage of the accuracy displayed is based on the model's percentage of extracting data from the specific document which you uploaded or is this based on the accuracy of the data i think it's a model so it's model accuracy person 
Yes, it's the model accuracy. We don't yet have information about the accuracy of the data, but you reminded me of something. Actually, I haven't really finished my model, my demo. I don't know if this was intended or not, but what I still wanted to show you is that I was telling you about how you build a model, you measure it, you consume it in automation, but you also have a mm -hmm. last part, which is monitor. We want to provide you data. I forgot about this. But basically with it, we want to provide the data visibility so that you can basically see how your automations are performing, link it to ROI, tell your customers about whether they are performing good or not, whether you need to tackle more use cases, whether you need to improve the models and so on. And in this regard, as part of our monitor experience, we have here two parts. First, there is an insights dashboard, which we have launched in preview. It's called the Document Understanding Project Performance Dashboard, where we display a couple of metrics with regards to your performance. Estimated time saved, estimated cost by some, uh, based on some inputs here, consumed AI units monthly trend per consumer, Number of process documents, depending on the automation. So for example, some have been used, uh, some have been processed using the final expense reporting process automation, and other ones using clipboard AI, some using, um, yeah, other automations, and they can be either via RPA or API. Numbers, numbers of documents per validator, straight through processing rate. So basically out of the total of process documents, how many have gone straight to processing or how many have been validated by a human in the loop. Um, here we display the time. So basically number of process, sorry, here we display ratio between the straight to processing rate and the total process documents. So basically how many of the documents have been processed, validated, and the count of the straight through processing documents. And here are the validators, me and Andras. I can see Andras has done a pretty sloppy job. How much time do you need to validate the document? <laughs> 36 seconds? Hmm, I don't know. But I have done a better job, I think. I have validated table data. That's why it has taken me longer. I see some consumption information with regards to the consumer AI units. I know this has been a hot topic. We also plan to address it at the platform level, but um, just here we display the consumed AI units within this document understanding project and other projects like, so you have a small comparison, but again, this is something which the platform team also wants to tackle at the platform level. So you see it. Mm -hmm. Rated by product and so on. And you also see here top runtime consumers. So who and how many uh, units is consumed. So our, because we just been GA since yesterday, we haven't consumed a, any AI units despite processing pages, except for APIs. And this using clipboard AI, therefore I don't really have data here. And here I would be seeing errors, error errors so that eventually if my automations would be failing, I'd be able to see what automation, when, how often it occurs and so on. Besides this insights dashboard, which again, we keep working on and we plan to add some new widgets to it. We also have here a list of process documents in this automation. I'd be able to see the document type if it has been classified. I would be able to see the consumer for it, when it was last modified, if it has been validated, then by whom. And if I choose to see the details of one, I can see it here. I can see the creation date, last updated date, who was the automation source, the document itself. The extraction results together with confidence scores, even for tables, I'd be able to see this. I see the predicted values of the table and the post-validation values. So for example, if anything would have changed here, then I'd be seeing the changes here too. And I would see here an overview of the task created for them. For example, there has been a validation task created for the extraction in this catalog and this was assigned to me and uh, this was the criticality, valid field, modified fields, and so on. 
This would provide you visibility into how your documents have been processed, how you can improve your automation, or how you can debug them. Wow. This increases the overall experience, and this completely changes the experience of using document understanding. And given the fact that uh, to our audience today, that this feature was literally GA'd yesterday, and we get to see, I think Monica, this is our first session, or this is your first time presentation to after Absolutely. GA, right? Yes. <laughs> so we are super lucky as a Singapore community to actually host you for this session. And it's amazing to see all these new features. I'm happy to Okay. So very grateful for the chance <laughs> and thanks for having me, Nisar. Shall we open for questions, Monica? Or you have some yes, awesome please. features to show us? I haven't forgotten anything <laughs> now. And if you want to see something, then yes, I'm happy to show it to you. Else, um, go amazing. Ahead. So we'll open the platform to... I see Manik mm -hmm. yes. has asked, or you go, sorry. Yeah, I'll ask, I'll take questions from chat. So Manik has asked question, can we get overall confidence score at the document level? Manik, you tell me, what would <laughs> that confidence score be? We have a confidence score per classification and we have others at field level. What would be per document? I think what he means is, Rather than having confidence uh, of field level experience, he wants to see the overall confidence, average confidence of the whole document. Is that what I? Is that what you mean, Manik? Do I understand your question correctly? Correct. Yeah. I understood the question. Is that it's just that I don't know what to tell you. For example, if for confidence we've extracted, for example, if we take the average of confidence mm -hmm. scores for the field. It won't mm -hmm. reflect an accurate picture because it may be that you extract 10 fields, nine with confidence 99%, and the 10th one with confidence 10%, and the average would be right. pretty low. Do we take them to the end? In a similar manner, we just look at an overview. It may be that some fields are more important than others. For example, building address may have confidence extraction confidence of 30%, but uh, total extraction of 100% or not 100, but 99%. Fields have mm -hmm. a different meaning for you in your business. How would I expect, how would I express this? So, um, I agree. So in I this case, what we think. usually do, Manik, I'll share my experience of working with these types of okay. projects. So we usually select the fields which are like critical and mandatory fields for us, which are a must have, must be extracted. And based on that, we decide the accuracy, I mean, extract the accuracy level on the field level and we create like a, like average score for ourselves based on the mandatory fields. And the fields which are not that mandatory, which might be missed, we just uh, don't include them in the, so this is all part of post-processing and post-extraction. Yes, but please also tell them, Nisarg, about how all these things depend on business specific, depend on business specific rules or business process. Yes. Have you encountered business processes in which they have the same rules? Because in my experience, they, oh, we just process invoices. Oh, we just need total to be positive. Ah, but then our system only accepts this and that. Ah, but we have two systems for invoices, one accepting minus, another one accepting underscore. So- Agree, agree. Kind of- So another question for, uh, on this one, Monica, is uh, Mahish is asking, can we uh, create a custom field? Yeah, so I didn't series. show you how I created um, my hotel invoice, but I'll show you now. So basically, no, let me show you from scratch. I can add a new custom document type. I don't know, we've had COVID around that say we want to work with vaccination products. And then what happens is that I add this vaccination proof document type for which I will define all my field customs. Let me just find one. For example, mine. I upload a vaccination proof document and I want to extract like the name and unique identifier of the vaccination proof in a similar. So the short answer is yes, but I wanted to show you how you do this. Mm -hmm. um, in a similar manner as defining a new custom document type. No, sorry. When defining a new custom document type, 
I just clicked around like a click monkey, but basically here you have a type. You can start, start from custom, which is from scratch, no predefined fields and everything is defined by you. Or you can choose one of our out of the box document types for which you add further fields. I start from scratch for my vaccination proof. If I go ahead and update, I have no fields defined. And what I do, I go ahead, add, it can be a simple field, it can be a column field part of our tables, because I told you that we can feature support one table. Go ahead and add a simple field, and I have here this document type manager, and I define it, for example, as name. I can create, I can specify here the content type, the hotkey for it. I don't want it as Q, I want it as N the color for it, and then eventually here I can also define whether it is a multi-line or multi-value and just save it. And in the future, we'll allow you similarly to Nisar described to define business rules. Mm -hmm. Correct, I agree. I can add here another field and so on. Did this answer your question? I hope yes. Yeah, this, this answers. Question. Mesh, if you have any questions. Uh, so we are open for questions now. If you want to unmute yourself, please feel free to unmute. You have access to unmute yourself is what I see. Yes, you have. So please feel free to unmute yourself. Ask any questions to Monica while we have her here live <laughs> because it's very hard to catch her offline. <laughs> I'm sure we are all very busy, but yeah, good to be with you. Any questions? Uh, hi, Monica. This is Praveen. So uh, thanks for the opportunity. I uh, just wanted to know about, uh, since I can see that uh, the studio version you have uh, you have opened in the, on the web portal. And from here only we are building the, um, using document understanding, we are building the model and running the uh, flow and getting the output as well. So from studio also this, uh, like if we are using a community version, is it possible to do all these uh, things and how we can do it? Yes, yeah, so absolutely. So I currently run on a MacBook, so I don't have Studio here installed yet. Okay. Um, and you'd be able to either from here, choose Open in Studio Desktop if you are on Windows. Okay. And you will have exactly the same experience in Studio, uh, Studio Desktop. Or if you continue in Studio Web, develop part of the workflow there and want to migrate to Studio Desktop, you have an option from there too. Maybe this you can show it because I don't have it available, mm -hmm. but it would come mm -hmm. here. Would you mind showing it, Nisark? Can you? Yes, let me quickly pull it up once again. Thank you. While I open this, in the meantime, we have a question from uh, WJ asking question about is the AI unit consumption applicable for same in production and development? I believe yes. Uh, you are correct. Would you want to? Yes. <laughs> so let me share my screen quickly. Give me a second. And uh, let me know once you're able to see my screen. Can you see my screen? Yes, sir. We can see. So here we have the option. So you click here. You, it says open in your iPad Studio desktop. So the moment you click here, it asks you to open in studio and just click here and then it will automatically open the studio project. So any project you have created on studio web will open in studio. Oh, okay. Okay. Great. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. Do you maybe have feedback around what you'd like us to work on next? Or is there anything you would need from us soon? Any feedback that you wish to share with Monica, you can reach out to us also later. Uh, you can reach out to me or Monica on LinkedIn. So let me share Monica's LinkedIn with all of you so you can connect with her and follow her post because she keeps on posting about latest features, latest updates, and also where she speaks. So you can follow her sessions and webinars where she talks and you can ask her questions. Also, so I have shared in chat about Monica's LinkedIn. If you wish to share your LinkedIn and expand your network with others, Please share your LinkedIn ID in the chat so all of us can connect with you. And this is my LinkedIn ID where you can actually connect with me and ask me to share and host similar sessions in future if you wish to. And 
let us know if you love this session so we can actually bring monica we can try to bring monica here live in singapore for I'd the next to. singapore ui path community day i absolutely <laughs> love to so that's our plan and let's see if we have a bigger audience where you know we have a place where so recently monica we had uipath community day in singapore so similarly we will we plan to do this in future as well purely for ai so that's when we will all support and push for that so we can see all this live and ask more questions uh, yes mahesh you have any question please yeah hi monica and uh, hi hi, hi nisa uh, in the AI center, we have an option that endpoint, then we can use it anywhere uh, to get the data. Is there any option in the document understanding this product? So, I don't think I got the question. What endpoint do you mean? Yeah, in the AI center, uh, after, the, uh, after the training all the documents, we got the endpoint, right? That endpoint we can use so he's in the studio. Yeah. Yes, so you have this option via document understanding via, via document understanding cloud APIs. Let me quickly show you. We have these APIs which enable you to consume our models from everywhere. If you go here, REST APIs, if you click here on framework, you have here the option to discover projects. Here you would basically get us return. Uh, Get us resolve the project you have configured plus the predefined ones. You can discover the extractors and you can just use them via these APIs calling extraction with the document ID you receive from digitization. Uh, and then, and this works for specialized and for generative extraction. You can as well provide the prompts as input to the APIs. Similarly, classification and validation. Did this answer? So basically, this is how you would be consuming the models you built in document understanding via APIs. Yeah, thank you, Monica. I'll get it. I'll get it. So I also have, Mahesh, uh, just for your information, I also have a similar video on my YouTube channel where I have used the APIs of document understanding. Uh, when they were released and uh, I have a detailed video on all of these APIs. I think there are new APIs also recently regarding the generative AI, but apart from that, I have a complete demonstration video, so you can refer to that. Also, we have a couple of UI web community events where we have demoed this from scratch. So you can refer those videos as well. Yeah, so, sure. yeah, thank you. So with respect of time, if you don't have any more questions, thank you so much, Monica for joining us. And, uh, if can, yeah. all of us can actually start our camera, just take one selfie just one picture so we can actually upload it on our social media and share the word that we actually created this amazing uh, small time to share the knowledge. So if you are comfortable, please start your camera so we can take one small click and then we can call it for the day. Good to see y'all. Let's take one minute for all of us to settle down. I see a couple of known faces. Like Ikshit, Vinit, IWJ. So nice. Okay, okay. Let's wait for one minute for all of us to start the camera. And I see Anil is working from office today. Why? Today is leave. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay. Someone's comfortable at the office. Yes. Okay, so let's take a quick picture when I say three. I think Anbraj is also working from office. Yeah. I'm also kind of working from my work from home office, so it's okay. <laughs> okay, so let's get started. Let's take a quick picture. Three, two, one. Okay, awesome. Thank you so much for joining and uh, happy automation. And thank you so much, Monica, for this amazing session. And we will distribute again in future for such sessions. So I hope uh, you know you help us with that. And thank you everyone for joining. See you again and happy automation. My pleasure. Oh. Thanks for having me, Nisar. It's been a pleasure. Have a good day. Thank, thank you. you. Yeah, thank, thank you, Monica and Nisar, for the great, wonderful thanks session. Thanks for having me.